What is up? Turtle here coming at you with some Pokemon news that got dropped the last couple days. Um, I found all this information on PokeBeach.com from a flurry of posts from Water Pokemon Master. Shout outs to you. And uh, we don't go over all the details, uh, so if you do want to find out even more some of the Pokemon that we're not going to hit in this video, check out PokeBeach.com. Alright, so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to actually start and end with some new products. And the first one is this Sword and Shield figure collection. Uh, this is one of those typical four pack for $20. Uh, comes with a pretty cool, uh, the figures are right with the three new starters. And as far as when this drops, this drops on May 1st for MSRP of $20. I believe it's the same day as the Rebel Clash release. I am not a fan of that name. I'm not sure about you guys. The thing that I am the most excited about with this product, and why I'll pick up at least a couple, is this promo. Um, it's just a Pikachu, but we do have Score Bunny. Um, Grookey and Sabo in the background. Uh, the card's not that strong, but that's not what these are about. Uh, the reason I'm excited about this, this is very reminiscent to some of the Japanese promos. You know I'm a huge fan of Japanese promos. I feel like they do a really good job, uh, much better than the English sets. And it's reminiscent of some of these, look at the art, it's very similar. This one has the base starters uh, for some kind of 20th anniversary, and I believe these other ones are kind of like these battle promos that they released through the years. Um, so. I'm a huge fan of these promos and maybe this means that the English will try to pr uh, print similar things and I would be a huge fan of that. Uh, beyond that the product you know it is one of those typical four pack things the, probably the least appealing thing is like alright we're out of X and Y but now we're getting not so useful sun and moon packs and this one being Guardians Rising. Um, I'm not sure what's in there, but I have to say that I'm not that excited to find that in this product. Is it better than Evolutions? I'm not even sure. But uh, either way, pretty good solid product that will be released on May 1st. Alright, let's start talking about some of the new cards that will be released in the upcoming set Rebel Clash for May. The first one is Toxic Toxtricity um, V, and this one is not too exciting. It feels like the commonality of these is like the V is pretty vanilla and then the VMAX has like an interesting attack. Uh, so we have Poison Jab, 20 damage, opponent's Pokemon is now poisoned, Electric Riot 90, if you are poisoned from maybe Poison Jab or something, it'll do 180. Uh, so 180 for 3 energy is not bad, but you do need to get that poison on there one way or another. Where things, in my opinion, get interesting is Tix. Uh, Toxtricity V Max. Although I guess it still works with the V, but I think this one's a little bit more exciting. Or for those three energy, two lightning, one colorless, 160 damage. And again, if you're poison, it does tax on another 80 for a total of 240. That is pretty good. Uh, could even one shot some tag teams like Picaram, for example. Obviously, it's going to two shot everything, and you know I feel feel like it puts. Uh, even for two shot like it puts things out of like any kind of healing range, which is good uh, So a pretty cool attack there, but it still has that clause your opponent's Pokemon needs to be poisoned And there is going to be a new tech card to help along and that is the new Garboder uh, Has attack for 80 that's not relevant all we really care about is Poison pool once in your turn if there's a stadium in play you may leave your opponent's back to Pokemon poison So it's kind of like a free poison provided there's a stadium. There's almost always a stadium I think the only thing at least in standard that I think you get rid of stadium is the um, Well, I guess if you get rid of a Cax, well, I guess there's no stadium and then the uh, the Marshad the um, the, yeah, the Marsh Shadow, they can get rid of it. So, uh, pretty interesting card. You know, I like this kind of synergy. I will say there's a lot of evolutions going on. We have a VMAX and a Stage 1 Garboder to kind of pull off this synergy. So, is it strong enough? I'm not sure, but I think it's kind of interesting. And we do have an electric type, although it is uh, Toxtricity that is not, you know, it's lightning. So that, that doesn't make sense, but they did kind of say that like, a lot of poison things can be dark, like this Garboder. Uh, but this one is lightning, but it has synergy with poison, which is kind of cool. Um, it could make things a little awkward because at that point you maybe are running two energy types, depending if any of your dark Pokemon are ever going to attack, unless they're just for support like this one. All right, next one we're gonna look at is Dragapult V. Once again, very vanilla, bite 30 damage for one Psychic and then two Psychic, 60 plus up to 80 if you do the little switcheroo thing, kind of like Zapdos, kind of like Raichu, Raichu. Uh, not too much interesting stuff here. Uh, it is all Psychic energy though, so that's worth noting. Dragapult V Max, this is where things get kind of cool in my opinion. Shred, uh, typical attack, 60, it doesn't affect uh, anything on your opponent's thing. And then 
Giganto Phantom. I like this. I feel like this is very interesting. 130 damage, put five damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. So it has a good amount of piercing damage. Five is a lot for two energy, and you can throw it in any way you like, so you can get you know multiple knockouts with this card. I feel like this card is very well balanced. Uh, as a result, maybe it won't be strong enough, but for only two second energy, uh, you are dealing one a total of 180 damage. But as far as the damage you're doing to the active is only 130. There are a lot of situations that this won't even be a two shot. Uh, but as a result, you can sprinkle quite a bit of damage. You know, I feel like if it was 150, even or actually a lot of things. Are to 320 now it feels like 160 or more i feel like this thing would be a home run almost borderline maybe too strong and i feel like this is a good balance where it it does a lot of things but doesn't do any of them fantastically uh so you kind of have to work with that balance so dragon pole v max another card that i find very interesting coming up in rebel clash eldegoss v this thing screams to me that all right, there's going to be some way that this thing is completely broken and you're going to end up in a match where in a situation against this card where you can't do anything. Ability Happy March. Uh, this thing is really strong. Once return when you play this card from your hand to the bench, it's just a V, it's just a basic, you don't need to evolve this. Put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand and then soar upward 50 damage. You may shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attach this into the deck. All right, so I guess the uh, so what what I've what like I have <laughs> I'm beginning to like oh gosh I can just see it now somehow this guy keeps coming back every turn they get back the supporter that they're going to use to basically cycle this combination every single time they're going to use soar upward to uh, basically put a Poké Doll in the active this that guy will go away and then this thing will just keep on looping. However, it does say that you can shuffle in all cards attached to the deck. So you know if whatever the energy supply is is always going back to the deck versus back into the hand um, so this is not you know it's not super easy but I'm sure there's gonna be some way that this card is going to be super annoying just kind of jabbing you for 50 damage and probably you have nothing you can do about that um, I'm not that excited about this card <laughs> Those kind of decks do frustrate me, probably just because I am usually on the receiving side. I usually don't play them. But Elder Goss V, uh, Boss's Order. All right, I am really enjoying this idea where they kind of put a the supporter as you know Boss's Order, Professor's Research, and then this is the Magnolia version. This is the Giovanni version, and then future versions of this card you can most likely play whatever version you want. I want to play the Magnolia one or I don't know, whatever the next professor is for each generation. Uh, so things like this is basically Lysander. And I guess the only downside of this, but I don't, I, I'll take it is it doesn't go backwards. Meaning I don't think this means we can play Lysander, even though they do the exact same thing. It's more just kind of going forward. They will be interchangeable. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of like if we're going to reprint the same card, why do we have to get four copies of it and again uh, so going forward that'll be the case and but let's take a look at the card itself this card is super strong I mean probably not as good as Guzma was but just to uh, use a supporter for a turn just to swap out your opponent's Pokemon um, like right now we're kind of forced to use great catcher or Pokemon catcher and that can be really frustrating if you keep flipping tails this is a guaranteed way I feel like this will speed up a lot of matchups for sure all right, we are getting some new unique energies and this one is sounds so strong. Speed lightning energy. It gives you a lightning energy attached to a Pokemon. And if you attach it to a lightning Pokemon, which there's probably a good chance you'll do, you draw two cards. You know, I thought draw energy was kind of cool. Ultimately, I don't feel like I saw any play, but this one is this uh, draw energy on like electric steroids. All right, so it's only for, it only happens if you play a lightning Pokemon, but it doesn't, it provides an actual lightning energy and you draw two cards. That sounds insane. Super good, in my opinion. This one is a less. Uh, I feel like this one is less scary, but it's still a pretty cool mechanic. Psychic energy, if you attach it to a psychic Pokemon, when it takes damage, put two damage counters on your attack on the attacking Pokemon. Um, you know, it's not a huge amount, but it's something you have to keep in consideration. It might just steer the numbers in uh, in favor of the, you know, if you have this energy on there. And, you know, with these special energies, yes, there are cards that can get rid of them, but to be honest, I feel like those are kind of rare. Maybe this will make those more uh, useful useful in the future 
All right, I said we're starting with sealed product and we're ending with sealed product once again. May 1st, $20. We got a Poltergeist V. Once again, four booster packs. I can't really tell what's, oh boy. that In, the, in this top left one, is that a, uh, I can't tell what that is, but uh, most likely there's gonna be something old or sun and moon that's out of standard rotation. Um, but let's take a look at the Poltergeist V. I put this at the end because it sounds like there could be some, a very similar effect to that horror energy and we have teapot of surprises basically whenever this thing takes damage you choose a card randomly from your opponent's hand and then they put it in the bottom of their deck so let's say we also slapped on that horror energy and it's like all right every single time i attack this thing i'm going to take two damage i have to just basically lose a card from my hand that sounds really annoying it doesn't have a lot of hp so one shotting this is probably doable um, and yeah, it does have Mind Bend, which doesn't sound that good. I, I, I feel like this is a pretty well balanced card because its passive abilities just sound really annoying to deal with. But at the same time, if this is your opponent's active Pokemon, it's like maybe we're not in a hurry. Maybe I can take a turn to get that one shot off. Uh, but interesting card. And I think this one actually wasn't printed in the Japanese set VMAX Rising, so that's kind of cool too. But uh, yeah, so that's the summary of the news that's been coming out the last couple days uh, for the future of the Pokemon TCG. Again, all of this stuff is going to be really relevant in English sets on May 1st. We still have a lot, bit of a time before that happens. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on any of these cards. Do you see synergies that we haven't gone over? Let me know in a comment down below. Other than that, guys, that's it for me today. I'm Moana Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.